The More Movement Crew. Welcome to the More Movement Crew podcast. I'm your host, Kanina Porter, and this is our first official episode. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking us out. I definitely want to invite you before we get started to subscribe to our channel by pressing the button below so that you can get more information and more videos uh, that are to come. So welcome. Welcome to the room. Welcome to the show. And I first want to quickly talk about um, how excited I am to actually have a podcast and to be here to have a show. Originally, I was just like, I'm just going to do a podcast that's just going to be audio and just kind of talk about uh, some of the things that I enjoy, my passion, and what I think my purpose is. But a friend of mine was like, hey, you got to do a YouTube show. So I actually did a video uh, show as well. And so it's also going to be available on audio for those of you who like to listen in the car or check us out uh, while you're at work. But there's also those of you who like to see people on video. So welcome, welcome to the show. So really quick, I want to talk about what the more movement is. Um, the more movement crew is an idea or a concept that evolved from me writing a book. I wrote a book in February called when you know, there is more that is available on Amazon and also on my website. So I'll give you that information after the end of this video and also below the video when we post it. So, um, I wrote the book, I published it in February and the book is just my story. It's my story. I was diagnosed with lupus and I go through this crazy journey to get to where I am today. And I wanted to share that. I was like, there's no way um, I want to just let my journey, my story be untold. So I wrote my story. I shared it. I published the book and I got a lot of really good feedback from people saying that it really touched them. It really inspired them to pursue all that God has for them. And so I was like, Hey, let's just start a movement. Let's just start a movement of people who want to reach these incredible goals, right? People who want to really change our world and the world around us. And also to kind of dive into like, what does it take to get to that place? Like, how do you get from being in bed, thinking about your dream, writing it down to actually making it happen? And I feel like there are people who have just like this natural um, instinct in them to actually like move forward and like what does that look like and I think that this show this platform will inspire people who want to make those moves who want to figure out how they can get involved and create change and so that is what the more movement crew is it's just a bunch of people who want to make a difference and really really make an impact so many people talk about making impact but who is really doing the work like People are do a lot of people are talking about they, what they want to do, what they hope to do, what the issues are, what the problems are in our society. And I want to interview people who are really doing the work, everyday people who are really creating change in their community and in the, in the world around them. So that is what this uh, podcast is. That is what the more movement is. And so this is the first episode which will be just me kind of talking about my story and my experience. But before I get into all of that, there is a game that I'm going to play. Uh, and I'm going to play with every guest on the show, and it's called Five Questions. And so instead of a guest answering those five questions, it's just going to be me answering those five questions. So you get a little bit more insight on who I am, and you'll get the tea. Like, you'll get the tea at what makes me tick, what I enjoy, and a little bit about my life. So... Let's get started. So question number one, what is the most interesting place that you have traveled to? So that's a really easy question because it's the summertime. I got the opportunity to travel this summer and a country that I got to visit was Jamaica. Jamaica is a beautiful place. It is by far the most amazing and interesting place I've been to thus far. Um, the people, the food, the culture, uh, everything about that country is a beautiful, beautiful place. And I definitely want to go back. I wish I could go back every year, to be honest. But Jamaica was such a beautiful place. And that is the most interesting place I've traveled to. I did the Bob Marley tour. I got a chance to see 
where he grew up and see his childhood home. And that was an experience that I will never forget. So Jamaica, hands down, is the best place to travel. And if you want to have fun, if you want to enjoy beautiful weather and beautiful people, um, go to Jamaica. I'm going to go with that answer. All right, so next question. What color best represents you? Well, the color that I would say best represents me would be like a green, like a vibrant green, because I consider myself to always be growing and evolving and changing. And that is something that I really think is important. That's something I take pride in. And green is just, it's like an evolution. It's always moving. It's always growing. It's always changing. And it's always becoming, working to become better. And it, it represents life. It represents growth. It represents money. So green, green is the color that best represents me. All right. So that's question number two. Question number three, what gets you out of bed every day? So that's a really easy question for me to answer. Purpose gets me out of bed every day. I think that there is just an undeniable feeling that there's something that I need to be doing, right? And a lot of times, and at first I didn't really know what that was. Like I didn't know what my purpose was, but through growth, through traveling and meeting people and figuring out what my talents and skill set is, I definitely have come to understand more about what my purpose is and to ultimately know that like I'm not done. I'm not done working, I'm not done growing. And there's just something for me to do. So you just wake up every day with a renewed sense of purpose because you want to fulfill that. You don't want to leave this world without your gifts, without having experienced your gifts. And so that is what gets me out of bed every day. So next question. Question number four. Name three artists that are in your playlist. So... Music is my love. I love music. I love listening to new music. I love discovering new artists. I've always loved music. And so my playlist currently, I am listening to more and more um, African music, particularly from Nigerian artists. I love, love, love um, reggae music. Since I come back from Jamaica, like I'm just in like a reggae vibe. So just African music, reggae music. I'm listening to a lot of artists. I'm also, um, I've also been like, I've always listened to gospel music. So gospel music is always like at the heart of who I am. And so artists like Sean Johnson, artists like my friend, Chris, Chris Liss, people who are just inspiring people who speak to this current generation. I think Jonathan McReynolds is a really great artist that speaks to this generation. And so those are the artists that constantly are in rotation. And then the last artist I would have to say would be her because her is so talented. She speaks to like the emotion, like as a woman, when you, have confidence when you really did some soul searching on who you are and you you really reflect on those ideas and so she just she's amazing she's amazing she's talented she gets she's gifted and I mean at any given day you could just put on a song by her and be inspired like it is what it is so those are the top three um, artists that are in my playlist at this current moment Question number five, what is the best advice that you were given? So I get a lot of advice, but particularly about relationships, about being uh, single. And so uh, people have a tendency to think that like, if you're single, then like you might need a little bit of help figuring it out or, or why is it that somebody like you is single? Like what, what is going on? And so they want to give you advice. And so in this particular case, I was having a conversation with a colleague and I was explaining to them how I was interested in this guy, but there were some things that um, I kind of questioned. I had some reservations and I just remember saying to her, he has a lot of potential. And she told me, she said that you don't need to look for a guy with just potential, but you need to look for a guy 
that has potential realized. And I was like, wow, like that, that makes sense, right? Because potential, knowing that somebody has potential is only that, but someone who has potential realized, meaning that they're actually moving forward in utilizing that potential. Like they understand it, they're aware and they're taking action. And so that was like, that's good advice. Like, I like that. I need that. So that was probably the best relationship advice I have been given. And so I appreciate that advice. I use that advice and you're welcome. Like you can have it. You can use it. (laughs) So that was the game five questions. So now we're going to get into the show and talk a little bit about my story. So I wrote a book in February. I kind of talked about that in the beginning of the podcast. And the story is just my reality. It is what I experienced being diagnosed with with lupus and post and pre diagnosis. And so it shares my most intimate moments, my most vulnerable moments in the book and what it was like to really, really be on this pursuit to figure out like what your purpose was and how it all works together, right? How traumatic events can actually turn into something positive. And so in my book, I share like this raw account of what I experienced and what I went through. And it was primarily for me to just vent, for me to just get my thoughts on paper, to be able to inspire people, to maybe inspire somebody that was diagnosed with lupus, to inspire young girls to pursue their goals despite what happens to them or what they're diagnosed with. So there was just a lot of things and a lot of reasons why I decided to write the book. And now, getting to the published part, like that was a whole other story. Like I I wrote, I stopped writing for a number of years. And then here within the last couple of years, I was just inspired to, to continue to write. And I stopped writing because I knew that my story wasn't finished. I knew that the current state that I was in was not how I wanted my book to end. So I was like, I've got to take a break and just figure out where God is taking me next. And so I took a break. And so in that, I actually learned and was actually able to understand that there was more that God had for my life. So being diagnosed with lupus was just a part of it. It was just a vehicle to help me to understand like what else there was for me out there. And so I think a lot of people can connect to that story. They can connect to having gone through something really difficult, whether it was a divorce, whether it was a death, whether it was abuse, right? We, we go through all of these really traumatic experiences and we try to figure out like, why, are, why is this happening to me? And how can I move forward? How can I utilize this um, and create power for myself? Like, how do I create a, a mission for myself in that way. And so I think that that's what I was able to do with lupus. I was able to see the disease as something that motivated me to continue to push forward and to not let it limit me. And I think it helped me to gain resilience. It helped to increase my faith and it just, it just made me an example of what that is. And so I gained all of that from this process. And so the reason why I wanted to share this on the podcast is because I think that there are important elements to knowing that there is more. And that is why the more movement exists because people need to know that despite what you're going through, there's definitely more to your situation. I always knew that there was something special that I was supposed to be doing, but I didn't know how to get there. I just thought, let me just keep working hard. Let me just keep saving my money, doing the right thing, and I'll get there. And something just felt like I I was missing something. And so when I got sick, I used that as an opportunity to be like, okay, where is it that I'm supposed to be going and what am, am I supposed to be doing? And so I had to basically start over. I had to start my life over and realize what I was passionate about and what was important to me. And that was working with young people. I love working with young people. I can't see myself doing anything else. And so the first first step I took was to start working at a nonprofit that worked with young people. And it was there that I found my passion. It was there that I found out like, this is what I am actually called to do. 
and that's working with young people. And so I have, I have had the experience of being able to, and the pleasure of being able to serve some of the like most amazing young people at that organization for like the last four years. And so I gained so much knowledge and so much insight as to how to better serve them and how to love them and how to be selfless in a lot of ways. And so that just helped me further figure out what my passion is. And so now I'm creating this platform to share other people's stories. I have experienced some of the ups and downs with working with young people and some of the most traumatic situations that you can imagine. But their stories are amazing. Their stories are stories of victory and overcoming such great obstacles that I don't see myself doing anything else. I, I, I can't imagine doing anything else. Like this is what I'm called to do. And so I really, really want people to start thinking about what it is that they're called to do, what it is that makes them who they are, why they were created. I mean, I know it's getting like super, super deep to, t- to think about like why you were created. And, you know, I have my beliefs. I always grew up in the church. Um, my foundation was always um, a Christian foundation, biblically based. But I think the most important part about my upbringing and my foundation was that I learned to separate religion from relationship. And so I always knew that despite what goes on around me and to me, that I needed to maintain my relationship with God. I needed to speak to him as though he was right there. And so he was with me through all of that process. And I think that's important when it comes to uh, a belief system, right? It's, It's about the relationship between you well, for me, between me and God, right? That is what's most important. It's not the package that it comes in. And so it's not about religion. It's just about relationship. And so that is what's so and so important. That's what's so important. And I think that that is what people need, right? That is what helps you to identify what you're supposed to be doing and how to utilize your gifts and how to recognize those gifts. And so that is pretty much my story. That is pretty much what um, the book is about, what the more movement is about and what I hope to do through this podcast. And so I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you are enjoying it thus far. And I want to end by asking a question that I'm going to ask every guest on the show. And the question is, when did you know that there was more? And so to answer that question, the moment that I knew that there was more is I was sitting at home. I was sitting At my parents' house, I had to leave my apartment. I had to resign from my job. I had spent all my money on medical expenses. And so I was broke, and I was starting over. And I remember saying to myself in that moment that this cannot be how I spend the rest of my life. This absolutely cannot be my destiny. There is so much more that God has for me, and this ain't it like straight up, this is not what is going to, this is not my reality. And so I had to look and see myself beyond being sick, being broke and being, and living with my parents. And I was able to do that through my relationship. I was able to do that with my faith and I did it. I'm here. I'm here before you. I have a podcast. We're going to have some dope guests on the show that are going to challenge us that are going to leave us to kind of question like how we've been doing things so far and it's going to be great. It's going to be great. But that is when I knew there was more. That was my, my moment because I knew my life wasn't supposed to look like this. And I hope that everybody who's watching that you also are really answering those questions. Like what is your more? What is the more that you're looking for? Well, thank you for tuning into our show. I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel You can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram, The More Movement Crew. Please like and follow us. We want to hear from you. We want to know that you're out there listening and that you are inspired. You can also check out this podcast on various media platforms. The link will be listed below. And thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next episode.